right, so for video number one, we're looking to go over a few things. Uh, we're going to go over the plug uh, plugins that we use, uh, the theme, along with whether you should or should not get use the free or paid version of the page layout tool that we're specifically going to go over in this video and then also go over some setting options as well um, for that particular plugin being beaver builder so um, with that being said the first thing that we want to go over is the plugin itself so if you hover over here to plugins and click on add new You'll notice you'll come to the plugins repository um, part of your uh, install of WordPress. And what you want to do is type in Beaver Builder. All right. And it'll automatically pull you in over here. And you, if you want to use the free version of Beaver Builder, you'll just simply click on install now and activate. And that will activate the um, this particular plugin. Now, mind you, for this tutorial and throughout this full video series i will be using the pro version i mean i highly and it is very very well worth getting the pro version of the plugin however um i will not be using the free version of this um if i click on plugins you'll notice two things don't worry about this wpmu dev dashboard uh the environment that i'm using to display these tutorials i'm actually using their hosting uh, or one of the hosting plans that I have in there for the um, for this tutorial. So disregard this. You do not have to worry about this particular plugin. However, uh, Beaver Builder plugin Pro version has already been installed. Um, and if you would like to get that plugin, um, I'm sure I'll have a link to it in the comments sec or in the description section below. Um, or you can head over to Beaver Builder dot com i believe and be able to purchase it there um after you've installed beaver builder um the way that you can get access to what you've installed is hovering over settings and clicking on beaver builder after doing that you'll notice that they bring you to this welcome screen from this welcome screen uh, it kind of gives you a brief rundown on uh, being able to get started with Beaver Builder. This screenshot is actually um, old. One of the reasons why we're doing this video is that this is not this screenshot actually needs to be updated because with the introduction of Gutenberg, which is the page layout tool that's used dedicated in WordPress now, this here is not the case for how Beaver Builder looks now. And I'll be sure to go over that later on in the tutorial um, but with that being said you can notice that they have a computer community you can click here to join the Facebook group they have a slack group community as well um, highly recommend joining the community um, even over the time of me using this which is probably about a little over three years now um, I've needed questions answered and the community is very very um, supportive and producing helpful um answers to questions that you might have whether it's with beaver builder directly or you using beaver builder and needing to achieve something specific for a particular project or, or, or a piece of website that you're working on um from there um if you did purchase a license key you'll uh, purchase a license to use the pro version you can click on license over here to the left you'll paste in your license key here click save license and that will um, activate your license license keys last for 365 days um, and from that you get um, one year of support meaning if you have any issues with beaver builder you can contact them directly and they'll be more than happy to assist you with whatever issues you may be having um, along with that throughout the year there's multiple updates that happen so whether they include a new feature a security update or um adding a new module, whatever the case it may be. Um, the idea is that having an active license entitles you to those ongoing updates for that for that full year. Now, if your license if your license does expire, you'll still be able to use Beaver Builder Pro. Um, it's not going to break your website whatsoever. It's just that the support will cease and the um, that well, the direct support would cease because once again, they have a Facebook group that is very very helpful and you will no longer get any more of those automatic updates 
but I highly recommend keeping the uh, license active on your site. Um, from there, we'll click on modules. Um, I'll go into modules a little bit more um, later on in this video series, but these are basically all of the um, things that you can drag on top of a page to, um, what am I trying to say, to uh, lay everything out. So for instance, if you wanna add an audio file, a button, heading text, photos, t um, just simple text, a video. Let's see what else we've got in here. Uh, if you've got any active widgets on, on, on your site, you can drag those in through Beaver Builder. Um, let's see, accordions, pricing tables, sidebars, tabs. So basically there's a lot that you can do. You can cut these modules on and off. So you, for instance, if you know you'll never need, instead of having a long list of modules, which once again, I'll go over further into this video, you can act like if you plan on never using the, con the, the default contact form that Beaver Builder provides, you can uncheck that and that will be something that you'll never see while laying out a page. But once again, like I said, I'll go over this further in the video. Um, from there, we've got post types. So by default, when you install Beaver Builder, whether it be the free one or the pro version, um, I think because I don't know if the free version even gives you this access to this option. But by default, the pages are the only one that actively can use Beaver Builder. In my personal opinion, that's the only time that I would recommend using Beaver Builder is on active pages, not posts. Um, however, if you do want to have posts act uh, to have access to the page builder you can most definitely click that and that option will be available and i'm sure i'll go over that later on in this video series from there we've got templates um in short you can create templates of pages um and things of that nature for your website so that are or, or sections that you reuse um on your site so that you do not have to continue to recreate them. And I'll be sure to go over that as well um, throughout this video series. From there, we'll click on user access. So this basically just says, depending on who's creating the site, um, if this is if you're a developer, designer, creating a site for a client, you can um, restrict access to, the, to certain settings, whether it be the builder access, um, user restricted editing, global rows, columns, and modules, eddings, settings, and then also um, on the admin end of things. And if you hover over these options, they kind of give you a more detailed explanation um, as to what, what you're um, setting restrictions for or user access for. Um, if you're a um, DIY on your own website, your business owner, blogger, whatever the case may be, uh, you most likely will never update any of these settings because you'll need access to everything on the site. However, if you do find yourself um, onboarding somebody to manage your website and you don't want them to have access to everything, um, you'll be able to use this area to uh, restrict their access so that they don't mess up any of the hard work that you've already gotten done or you've done on your website. From there, if we click on icons, so we've got um, a lot of icons. I'm not gonna show you how to upload icon sets. However, you can select what icons, um, you what icon libraries you have access to uh, on your site. Now, with that being said, um, you this is basically the same thing as the modules themselves where you can click on and off. So if you know you only wanna use font awesome five icons or the branded icons meaning like your instagram facebook microsoft whatever um, you can cut on and off these options um, if you're not familiar with what icons i'm referencing whenever you go to a website you know you might see an icon for like a rocket an email icon social media icons right those icons um in my experience mostly come from a, co a, co a company called font awesome and basically they're just a, they're a company that creates icons um i believe if i was to say open source would be a good term for me to use um but the idea is just that people can integrate into their system to pull that information in and that's basically what this is um you can cut on whatever icons you would like used on your site or, or available for you to use on your site if we click on tools, so down here below, this is basically, um, I don't want to get too technical, but let's say something's not loading right on your site. You can clear the cache here, like completely clear the cache for um, Beaver Builder. 
typically that's that's like a troubleshooting thing that you'll find yourself wanting to do. Um, if you scroll down, you can see um, debug mode. So if, if you need to find out what error code is happening, if there is an issue on your site, you can enable that here. Uh, if you want to help Beaver Builder become better, you can enable um, user data. So basically, it, they don't track necessarily like sensitive information. They just want to know what plugins are you using, what what is your hosting environment, and stuff like that. Um, and then ultimately, if you find yourself never wanting to use Beaver Builder at all, and you want to completely remove it from your site, you can click this uninstall button at the bottom here. So this is um, the introductional piece to whenever you install Beaver Builder. Once again, if you hover over settings and click on Beaver Builder, these are all of the option settings in the Beaver Builder plugin itself um, right here. Now, what I want to go over is the um, themes. So Beaver Builder works is, is an independent plugin. So you do not have to have a specific theme installed on your site to use Beaver Builder. However, there are some themes that I personally would recommend um, using for Beaver Builder. Um, and the main reason for that is because Beaver Builder gives you a lot of power. And I would recommend using a theme that doesn't that gives you um, the maximum amount of control over what you can do with Beaver Builder. And I'm gonna show you what I mean, or, or what themes I recommend um, now. So if you hover over appearance and click on themes, you'll notice that I've got, um, there's four themes installed. Well, three themes and one child theme, and I'll go over what a child theme is briefly. Um, but ultimately Beaver Builder itself, that's what I recommend using. And you can actually get Beaver Builder. You do have to pay for Beaver Builder. This is not a free thing, but that is the reason why I have Astra installed because Astra is. In short, Beaver, Beaver Builder theme um, is basically the theme that was specifically created to use for Beaver Builder. So anything that you ever wanted to do with Beaver Builder, you can do with this theme. I use it. I love it. Um, I've used it now on probably a little over 125 sites. Um, I was previously using another page builder and another and, and multiple various other themes. And ultimately, when I came across Beaver Builder itself, the plugin, and that they had a theme, I was just like, it made my workflow so much easier. So I highly recommend Beaver Builder. Um, and once again, you can get that through um, Beaver Builder's website. And like I said, I most likely have a link to that. It's wherever this is getting posted, most likely on YouTube. So in the um, show notes or whatever that is, <laughs> I'm totally having a brain fart right now. Um, the idea is just that this theme here is good. Now, mind you, there's an accompany theme that's actually active, which is a child theme. In short, because I don't want to, this isn't a video about what themes are. But for the, if you, it, let's say we do some custom whatever to your theme, right? This theme itself is always gonna get updates, right? Or always gonna need updates, once again, if you have an active license. So what you'll find yourself um, seeing is that if you were to build everything dedicated on this theme, let's say you added some custom code, CSS, to your website, and it was to change one button red instead of blue, right? Well, if you added that code right into this theme, whenever an update needs to get pushed to this theme, it's most likely going to override um, that custom code that was added to this theme, which means that you will have lost all of your 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 um, custom code to your site, which means your website most likely is going to look like give that default look. What happens is, is that you to avoid that, you'll want to create a child theme and Beaver Builder was so kind to automatically include a child theme within their um, within the download whenever you make your purchase. So what happens is, is this theme will always you can't use this child theme without Beaver Builder, without the default theme. So these two are paired. However, whenever an update happens, you'll put your custom code here because this is the active theme. However, this theme is gonna automatically always get the updates, which means you'll never override what you have in your child theme because all the custom code is in the child theme while the updates are happening here. And they're both basically bound together to some degree, right? Um, Astra, 
It is a completely um, free theme. There is a pro version for it. However, it is compatible with Beaver Builder. Um, and the idea here is just that it's free. You know, if you just if, if you're if you're looking to get started, uh, if you kind of backtrack to the beginning of this video, you can install literally the free version of Beaver Builder and use Astra and have a very very powerful um, system to start developing designing out websites and pages. Um, and then if you like that, you can enhance that by getting these paid versions. But in short, Astra does work. Um, Astra, as of right now, um, you can get a child theme from Astra, right? And it is free. However, you do have to go to um, a website to download, and I'll be sure to include that as well in the description down below if you wanted to use Astra. But I do recommend you to download a child theme for whatever, you know, um, web page, I mean, theme that you decide to use. Um, and I believe other than that, that is basically everything that I wanted to go over. So to recap, um, Beaver Builder, there's a free and a paid version. As far as this uh, series is concerned, we'll be using the pro version. As far as the settings, if you want to dive into uh, the default settings of Beaver Builder, you'll hover over settings. And I guess I should say admin settings because there's other things that we can customize as well that we'll be going over. But if you hover over settings, click on Beaver Builder. This is everything that'll that this is everything Beaver Builder. Joining the Facebook group, Slack group, uh, entering in your license keys, um, selecting the modules you want or don't want to use, um, so on and so forth. And uh, other than that, We've got the themes hovering over an appearance in themes. Astra is the free theme to use. However, as far as the series is concerned, we'll be using the Beaver Builder um, theme, specifically the child building everything on top of the child theme. So um, appreciate you making it to the end of this video. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.